Hi guys, in this video we're going to work through a two-way analysis of variance, ANOVA example together. All right. So here's the data that we're going to be working with. So first let me just read a little bit about this so we know what the study was about. So one way to repair serious wounds is to insert some material as a scaffold for the body's repair cells to use as a template for new tissue. So there's six different types of these scaffolds that we're going to be looking at and that's what this variable here is. So here is one type, two types, three, the fourth type, the fifth type, and the sixth type. So these are the six different types of scaffolds that we're going to be using. Okay, And then we're going to be, um, the study, we're not going to actually do this, used uh, lab mice that had wounds and applied these one of these six uh, scaffold types as well as tr uh, tracked the uh, the level of healing of the from the wound at four week and eight week increment okay at the fourth week we saw how much repair was done and at eight weeks we saw how much repair was done okay and the way we the variable that we use to measure the amount of repair uh, the level of repair was this right here GPI and GPI stands for the glucose phosphated isomerase GPI and that's the number of those GPI cells in the region of the wound and that's recorded as a percentage so a higher GPI indicates a, a good repair, okay, better repair in the tissue. Okay, so the experiment included a group of rats that were given each type of uh, each type of these um, scaffolds, and then were tracked for different lengths of time, so either four weeks or eight weeks. And these were the results. So you could think of this as 36 rats, six, let's see, six of them were given this, the first method. Three of those were followed for four weeks. Three of those were followed for eight weeks. Okay? And then the level of repair as measured by GPI was recorded for each. So this is one rat right here. Okay, and then so on down to, let's say, this group, which was given this material one. Three, of, three rats were given material one. They were tracked for four weeks, and this was their level of repair. Another three were given the same material, but tracked, but the level of GPI was recorded after eight weeks. Okay, so obviously what we're interested in here is, is the scaffold type a factor? In, the rep in repairing tissue and also is length of time a factor in repairing tissue. Now looked at in uh, separately you would say of course the length of time, a uh, longer period of time would probably result in a better healing uh, and yield a higher GPI. But uh, what we're interested perhaps here is to see if dip with different methods, materials, excuse me, different lengths are more effective. So that's that interaction component that you're aware of if you're studying two-way ANOVA. Okay, so two-way ANOVA not only lets you look at the main effects, which here are going to be the group, the material group, but also the, <clears throat> the uh, length of time. And so we can ask whether there's an interaction between those two main effects. All right. So in this sheet, I've actually taken all this data and summarized it into a, a more succinct table. And actually, this is how Excel needs the data. OK, so this is simply this sheet over here summarized in a more neat and uh, in a table format that's ready for Excel's data analysis to take as an input. All right. So what are we looking at here? Here's the material. Here are the three rats that got 
uh, material ECM1 as their scaffold for their wound and were measured after four weeks. These were the three GPI levels. Okay, and so let's just take one other group. Material 1, rats that were given material 1 and measured for their GPI percentage after eight weeks. Right, so it's the intersection of that level of length with this level of material. Okay, and these numbers are the GPIs. All right, so you can think of this as <coughs> our, fa our factor A is material. Let's make this a little wider. Our factor B is the length of time that we allow to elapse before we measure the GPI level. And our variable of interest is the GPI which is measured as a percentage. Okay, and as you can see, we have three mice or rats at each level of material and at each level of length. So at the intersection of any level of material and any given level of length, we have three observations. Okay, so here you see we have three for ECM1 and four weeks. Here you see we have three for material three and eight weeks and so on and so forth. If you were to look through all these, these are all three. Okay? Okay, now so we understand a little further before we jump into the actual calculations and so on. Let's understand this data a little better. Let's see the symbols that I'm going to use. I'm going to use lowercase r for the number of levels of factor A. And since we called factor A material here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six unique levels of material. So six. Okay. Next, I use the letter C to indicate the number of levels of factor B. So C is kind of easier to remember because it's the columns, it's the one in the columns, and R is the one in the rows. Okay, so nothing, nothing too special about this notation, just the one that I use. So there's clearly two levels of factor B, which is the length, right? It's either four weeks, a, a mouse or rat either falls into the four week or the eight week group. Okay? And then I used n prime to indicate the number of values for each combination of a particular level of factor A and a particular level of factor B, sometimes just called the replications. Okay? So, number of observations at a particular level of factor A and a particular level of factor B. So we could take any two levels. So we could use this level of factor A and this level of factor B and see how many replications there are. So you see ECM1 goes down to here, so we have three. We could have used ECM3 as our example and eight weeks. So that's a particular level of factor A and this is a particular level of factor B and there happens to be also three. Okay, so that's three. We have three replications. And then finally, I used n to indicate the total number of observations in the whole experiment. And here, to do that, we can do that just by highlighting all the actual observations. And looking down here in the summary, I'm looking down here, 36. All right. So let's just annotate this stuff a little more and then we'll move on in the subsequent video to actually doing this two-way ANOVA and proceeding. All right, so let's just go back. Factor A, let's be very clear. There are th six levels and we could name them all. ECM 1, 2, 3, material 1, 2, 3. Factor B, length, it's two levels. It's either four weeks or eight weeks. And GPI, obviously, 
it, it's a percentage of this particular type of cell in the blood. Okay? Okay, now, finally, before we jump into the calculations, let's state the hypothesis tests. So we're going to have three hypothesis tests, right? First is going to be for the main for the first main effect so let's use factor a the null hypothesis is going to be that the mean of ECM1 so let's call it E1 is equal to the mean of E2 is equal to the mean of E3 is equal to the mean of mat1 is equal to the mean of mat2 is equal to finally the mean of mat3 okay so that's a pretty big null hypothesis basically that all that factor one's levels all share the same mean another way of saying the factor one taken on its own is not a factor A, excuse me, material taken on its own does not yield any difference in the mean GPI level in the tissue. Okay, The alternative hypothesis we could summarize with at least one inequality. So at least one of these means is different than the others. It could be that they're all different than each other. It could be that one is different than all the rest and all the other rest are the same. And it could be any combination in between. Okay? And of course, we'll have a level of significance here. The second hypothesis test is going to be for factor B, which in our case is length. Here we're going to see that test whether the mean of a four week length, four, four weeks of particular material is equal to the mean of eight weeks. Okay? And this is, of course, irrespective, I should say, of the material used. This is just focusing on the main effect of length, okay, which takes on these two levels. Okay. And the alternative, again, is ALOI. But in this case, ALOI really amounts to mu4 not equal to mu8. Okay, so we could still write this, but you should see in this case that you're really testing. There's only one inequality that's possible when you have two means. Okay, and finally, what makes two-way ANOVA more powerful than, a, than two separate one-way ANOVAs, which these could have been done separately, is to look at the interaction is basically this hypothesis statement is a formal way of asking the question are material and length related do they interact okay so this is a question that we want to ask so how can we ask this we can write it a number of ways and the first is to say that the in that there is no we start in words, in not the null hypothesis, we're going to start out by assuming that there is no interaction. So it doesn't matter what type of material you use with what length of time. Okay? The alternative is that there is interaction. So let me do ditto. There is interaction. Okay. So let me stress this maybe. There is underlying interaction. All right. So we start out by assuming that there is no interaction. The alternative hypothesis is saying that there is interaction. And when we say there is interaction, in, in this case, we're saying that the material that we use does interact with the length of time to heal okay so for example if there is interaction if we turn if it there turns out to be interaction we might find out that ECM3 this material is actually much more effective 
in a shorter length of, of time, in the four week length. Whereas, let's say material two is much more effective in a longer duration of time. Okay, so that would indicate some interaction between these two factors. All right, and so we do a formal hypothesis test for that. So we have three hypothesis tests that we will simultaneously do using Excel's data analysis tool pack. I will continue this in the following video and we'll look at the output and determine what we learn. So make sure to watch part two.